Welcome to our lecture online. There's something about the sun that has puzzled me for a very long time. Why is it that during the height of the solar cycle, when there's lots of sunspots on the surface of the sun, the actual intensity of the sunlight is greater than when there's no sunspots on the surface of the sun? And the sunspots themselves are cooler than the rest of the surface of the sun, so that didn't appear to make a lot of sense. So the question is, why is the radiation from the sun larger when the sunspots on the surface of the sun? Well, it turns out that's not the entire picture. So let's take a look at a typical sunspot right here and notice that, yes, indeed, if the typical temperature of the surface of the sun is about 5,800 Kelvin, it's slightly less than that, but let's take that number as being the surface temperature of the sun, then the sunspot can be quite a bit less. So let's say that the sunspot here is at a temperature about 1,000 degrees Kelvin less, 4,800 Kelvin. But what happens there is that the, the pressure in the atmosphere of the sun here, where the sunspot is, has therefore also increased. And that's caused by the, by the uh, uh, magnetic fields holding back the heat coming up from the surface of the sun. But that causes the atmospheric pressure around the sunspot to increase. So increased pressure there causes the additional heat that normally would come where the sunspot is to come to the surface of the sun around the sunspot, therefore raising the temperature around the sunspot by just a little bit. Let's assume that the temperature around the sunspot is 5,890 Kelvin, about 90 degrees Kelvin warmer than the rest of the surface of the sun. Now let's assume that the total area of that region where you have the sunspot plus the area around the sunspot is 5.1 times 10 to the 14 square meter, which is larger than the area that's exposed to the sun from the Earth. And let's assume that the emissivity is 0.965. And also let's assume that the area where the temperature is less, 4,800 Kelvin, is about 10% of that of that area, and that the rest of the area where the temperature is just slightly more is about 90% of that area. Well, can we calculate, first of all, the, the power or the uh, intensity of the light coming from the area of that where the sunspot is if it was a normal temperature, if the sunspot wasn't there? B, can we then calculate the average temperature of that region? And then C, can we calculate the power of the sunspot and the area around the sunspot. And let's compare that to what it would be if there was no sunspot at all. So that hopefully will explain why the sun's irradiance is larger when we have a height of the solar activity where there's lots of sunspots than when there's no sunspots. We do realize that the solar cycle varies by about 1.3 watts per square meter. So at the height of the solar cycle, it puts out a little bit more light a little bit more intensity than at the normal uh, phase of the, of the solar cycle. And that's only a change of about 0.1%, but the, and the average uh, irradiance, the average amount of power we get per square meter or intensity is about 1,361 watts per square meter. So it adds a little bit over one watt per square meter to this during the height of the solar cycle, which of course causes us to have more intensity, more energy from the sun during that period of time. So let's calculate the power of that area of the, of the surface if the temperature was entirely at 5,800 Kelvin. And of course, what we're going to need there is we're going to need the equation where the intensity, by definition, is equal to the power divided by the area, which means that the intensity, or not the intensity, but the power, if we're going to calculate the power, is equal to the intensity times the area, and of course the power due to radiation is equal to the emissivity times the constant times the area times temperature to the fourth power, which therefore causes the intensity, which is equal to the powers per square meter, to be equal to E sigma times T to the fourth power. All right, now let's calculate the power output of that area of the surface of the sun assuming that the entire temperature was at 5,800 Kelvin. So at that point, we get the power is equal to E times sigma times A times T to the fourth power, which is equal to E, we set to be 0 0.965. Sigma is going to be equal to 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. That would be watts per square meter times Kelvin to the fourth power. 
and it looks like I'm going to be running out of room so let me continue continue over here so times the area and we were given the area to be this that would be 5.1 times 10 to the 14th meter squared and then we're going to multiply that times temperature to fourth power which would be 5800 Kelvin to the fourth power all right let's multiply all that together and see what answer a would be equal to so 0.965 times 5.67 e to the 8 minus times 5.1 e to the 14th and times 5800 square square equals and we get 3.16 roughly speaking so let me go over here so the power for part a is equal to 3.158 158 that would be watts per square meter nope that's the total power, the, the, the intensity would be that divided by the area, so this simply would be watts. That would be the output of energy of the sun over that area that normally is occupied by a sunspot. Um, I'm missing something here. That would, <laughs> that would not be a very warm sun. How about times 10 to the 22? How about that? That would be better. Okay, there's answer number A, or answer A. The amount of energy we get from that region of the sun if there was no sunspot. Now, what is the average temperature of that sunspot right there? So temperature average, T average, can be calculated by saying we take the temperature inside, that's 4800 Kelvin, and that takes up 10% of the area, so we're going to multiply that times 0.1 because that occupies 10% of the total area of the sunspot, plus the temperature outside which would be 5890 Kelvin and that occupies 90% so we multiply that times 0.9 and that will give us the average temperature of the sunspot so 4800 times 0 0.1 plus 5890 times 0 0.9 equals temperature average of 5781 Kelvin now this is surprising notice that the average temperature of the region occupied by the by the sunspot is actually less so this is part b that's actually less than the temperature we have on the surface sun normally if we use that as a baseline temperature so then you would think if the average temperature is less why would you get more energy more power more irradiance from that region of the sun well that's because that the amount of power or energy we get from the sun is a function of temperature to the fourth power so the slight increase here when that's raised to the fourth power has a much greater effect than the, than the enormous decrease here so in other words that small amount of increase in temperature the region around the sunspot versus the large decrease of the temperature where the sunspot actually is that actually makes more of a difference because of the temperature to the fourth power and that's why during the high solar activity we get more energy from the sun well we're going to calculate that now so let's do that let's calculate the power we get let's call this region number one and let's call this region number two and let's calculate the power from each region add it together and then see how that compares to the answer we got for part a when we assumed the temperature was 5800 kelvin when there was no sunspot so power from region number one is equal to E sigma A temperature to the fourth power. And so that's going to be equal to 0 0.965 times uh, 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared times Kelvin to the fourth power times, and of course we're going to continue over here because we don't have a lot of room, area it's going to be 10 percent because we're not calculating region number one 10 percent of this area so that would be 0 0.1 times 5.1 times 10 to the 14th meter squared and then the temperature would be 4800 kelvin and we have to raise that to the fourth power so power from region number one is 0.965 times 5.67 e to the 8 minus times 0.1 times 5.1 e to the 14th and times 4800 square square equals 
and for that region we get 0 0.148 times 10 to the 22nd watts. So this is the power we get from the region of the sunspot where the temperature actually is about 4,800 Kelvin. Now we're going to do the same for power for region number two, which is going to be to E sigma AT to the fourth power. And so again, 0 0.965. Sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per square meter Kelvin to the fourth power. Now for the area, where are we here? Area, we need 90% of the area right here. So it would be 0 0.9 times 5.1 times 10 to the 14th meter squared. And now the temperature there would be 5890, 5890 Kelvin, and that's the fourth power. Okay, so we have power for region number two. And let's see what we get there. 0.965 times 5.67 e to the eight minus times 0.9 times 5.1 e to the 14th times 5890 square square equals and there we get a power of 3.022 actually 0.23 if I round it off 0.23 times 10 to the 22nd watts okay now if we let's see how that compares over here so we have this here so now let's add P1 and P2 together. So we have P1 plus P2. So P1 is right here. P2 is right there. So let's add those two together. So plus 0.148 e to the 22nd. And I get that would be equal to 3.1706. I can just leave it as 3.17 times 10 to the 22 watts. And let's see how that compares to what it would be when we div. Okay, I have one more decimal place, so let's let's add the one more decimal place. 171 times 10 to the 26, 22nd uh, watts. So notice that's the power output from the region where we have a sunspot plus the region around it. And that's the power output when there was no sunspot. And you can see there's clearly a difference. So if we now do a ratio of P1 plus P2 divided by the original. Let's call this the original power, P sub naught. And we do a ratio of that, so take this number and divide it by this number and see what we get. So divide by 3.158 e to the 22nd, and we get 1.004. In other words, the increase, increase of the solar radiation from a single sunspot using, of course, these parameters. Here's just parameters would be 0.4% of an increase from that area of the sunspot. And then, of course, if there's 100 sunspots and you multiply that times 100, you do get some additional radiation from the sun. And therefore, it is not unusual to see about a 0.1% increase of the overall ra radiance, or overall intensity of the sun when there's a high solar activity with let's say 100 sunspots on the surface. And that is how we know that when the, we're at the peak of the sun cycle, the solar cycle, we have a little bit more sunshine and it gets a little bit more warmer. And that is how it's done. Mystery solved. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't sleeping at all. <laughs> well, I actually was wondering about that for a long time. I know, I mean, I was going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it is definitely counterintuitive. <laughs>